Okay, this is a video regarding my blood glucose. A lot of people have speculated on that. Uh, many of the vegans have been dancing around celebrating, saying I have diabetes and all kinds of things uh, to support their, uh, their particular agenda. Uh, what they don't tell you is, uh, despite a fasting blood glucose in the 120s, a hemoglobin A1C of 6.3, my insulin is 2.6. I am extremely insulin sensitive. If you calculate a HOMA IR score, it comes out to 0 0.8, which makes me extremely insulin sensitive. Um, I don't have any diabetic pathophysiology, which, which is a classic sense. Um, my excursions postprandial are extremely low. My levels stay at a very low, you know, low range. I never get above, you know, about 135 regardless. Now the question becomes, why is it elevated? Well, there's some interesting data coming out on particularly looking at athletes. Uh, there was a study in 2016 looking at continuous glucose monitors and sub-elite level athletes, and they found that about 30% of those athletes had fasting blood glucoses in the pre-diabetic range and even, frankly, in the diabetic ranges. The ones that had the highest glucoses were the ones that were exercising the hardest and the ones that were ingesting the least amount of carbohydrates. A, uh, another study that was performed by a fellow named uh, Alessandro Ferretti out of the UK looked at eight Olympic world champion level athletes and found that six out of those eight athletes, again, had fasting blood glucoses in the pre-diabetic range. And so what we're seeing is a trend with high demand athletic activity, blood glucose rises to meet those demands. You couple that with the fact that I eat basically zero uh, carbohydrate on a, uh, on a you know completely carnivorous diet and you have a very robust capacity to maintain and elevate blood glucose. Um, additionally, if we go back into history, we look at uh, the Inuit population and we look at their metabolic parameters from the 1920s. 1928 study was, was uh, the one I found on Inuit metabolism and they all had fasting blood glucoses in the 120s without any evidence of diabetic complications. Now, this doesn't mean that you can have high blood glucose and you should ignore it, but you should be aware if you are a high-level athlete and you have very low insulin levels and insulin sensitivities, this may be a mechanism. Now, what does that mean long-term? could mean that that is a normal adaptation to high-level athletic activity. Most of those athletes are very lean, uh, have good general markers of health. My insulin, my inflammatory markers are next to none. 0 0.6 was my C-reactive protein. My triglyceride levels are extremely low at 54. My triglyceride, triglyceride HDL level also very favorable at, a, at about 1.2. Uh, so I have very good markers of health. Couple that with the fact that I maintain about 240 to 250 pounds of lean muscular mass uh, at age 50. Uh, I am a world champion, world record holder on the Concept 2, uh, I, and I train that very frequently. Uh, I have rode that faster than many Olympic gold medalist rowers have done. I rode it faster than many top-level strongman competitors, world champion strongman or com competitors, and I've also rode it much faster than top-level cross CrossFit athletes. So that gives you an idea of the physiologic demand from an athletic standpoint that I put out. We have data on people that have had higher levels of uh, fasting glucose that do not display any of the diabetic complications that we would typically see. Retinopathy, uh, kidney disease, cardiovascular disease. One subset of that population would be the uh, glucokinase deficiency people. We've got 48 years of data on those people which showed despite a hemoglobin A1C of 6.8, which is still quite a bit even higher than mine, no evidence of complications any higher than the general population. And so, again, blood glucose is a associated marker of disease. It is not necessarily causative. It's not the glucose in the blood. It's what happens when the glucose interacts with the tissues and we go from glycation to advanced glycation end products. That process requires oxidative stress and an environment that will support that. There are a number of things that mitigate the formation of advanced glycation end products, one of the most powerful being Carnison. Carnison is found exclusively and heavily in red meat, which I consume in abundance. So, what's well, interesting, the path, the pathophysiology and the mechanistic reasons for this is probably not diabetic pathophysiology. 
it to be ter- it, 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 it remains to be seen long term what the impact will be. Things that I can look at over time will be scanning blood vessels, looking at heart scans, things like that, possibly getting things like serum advanced glycation end product tests down the road. So that is the update. The vegans, you know, you guys can complain and, and gripe and uh, say whatever you're going to say. The people that have some sophistication and understand that physiology is much more complicated, understand that associational markers have to be context dependent. Any associational lab mark, you look at it, you have to say it is associated with whatever. Lab marker X is associated with disease Y. Well, then you have to follow up and say, how strong is the association? And does it apply to all populations in all circumstances? And I think if you take that approach, you will find that many of the things, many of the assumptions you've made don't necessarily hold up. Again, low power populations, ketogenic populations, carnivorous populations, our lab reference ranges are very likely uh, do not necessarily fall in line with the standard reference ranges, which were determined on high uh, carbohydrate consuming populations which arguably are less healthy anyway I hope this clears it up go to sean-baker.com if you want article references I've written an article on that I think it's a pretty decent read uh, and that might uh, at least for, for you guys who are interested I know the, the vegans don't care they have their their proselytizing for their religion they'll do whatever they want you guys no one's listening to you no one cares I don't care okay uh, for you guys that have an interest in this stuff and want to advance your, your learning, go read the article I wrote. Um, you know, check out the references. Uh, l- let me see what you guys think. And you guys have a good day and enjoy steak. Take care.